You know I live in eat NBA. Here's the deal. I've thought about LaMarcus Aldridge. I've thought about him being added to Tim Duncan. Skip Bayless. This is a big no. There's Skip a big Bayless. Coming, yep. mm. I still can't go with him. I knew it. I got to go with Kevin Durant, Russell Westbrook, and the Oklahoma City Thunder meeting LeBron and the crew in the finals. Okay. To say the Thunder struggled down the stretch last night against the Raptors would be an understatement. The Thunder led the Raptors by six points late in the fourth, but then only scored one point in the final two minutes, and Toronto gets the comeback win. The Thunder now have two losses and face the Bulls tonight. Stephen A., you picked them to win the West, but are you a little concerned now by what you're seeing from OKC? Absolutely not. It's going to be their fourth game in five nights. Um, it's relatively young in the season. They've won the first two games, uh, first three games of this season. They lost the last two to Houston and Toronto. Houston was in the Western Conference Finals last year. They got a superstar in James Harden that dropped 37. Uh, you know, they were on the road. Things happen. Against Toronto, this is the only undefeated team in the Eastern Conference. They're incredibly gifted. We all know Dwayne Casey could coach. coach. They've got length and athleticism on, and versatility on their squad. The Oklahoma City Thunder have to do a better job of continuing to move the basketball, cut down on their turnovers. They've got to rebound the basketball. And more importantly, Kevin Durant and Russell Westbrook averaging 29 and 28 respectively, shooting identical from the field at 49.5%, which is an improvement for, for Russell Westbrook percentage-wise, even though Kevin Durant is shooting a bit better from three-point range. The reality is, is that they're combining for 40 points, uh, 41 shots a night, 40 shots a night, actually. So when you look at it from that perspective, and then you think about the Serge Ibaka's, the Enos Cantors of the world, both averaging over 11 points, but certainly not nearly as active shooting the basketball or what have you, it's not to say that the formula per se should change, Skip, because we all know that Kevin Durant and Russell Westbrook is going to carry the brunt of the offensive load. The flip side, however, is that you have to be careful to make sure that others get involved so they don't fall asleep on you during the game, whether it's be whether it be offense in terms of being active, moving their feet, setting picks and screens, etc., or whether it be active on defense, even though Serge Ibaka is averaging more than three blocks a game, you still need these guys to be actively involved and to get them involved. So what I would say to a Kevin Durant, a Russell Westbrook, turn it up a notch in the fourth quarter as it pertains to your willingness to shoot the basketball and be in attack mode. But prior to that, do a better job slightly of getting other guys involved just so you can rely on them to be active when it counts most, which is the fourth quarter. Because sometimes when you've got two prolific offensive individuals and you're shooting all the time throughout the game, guys will let you down in terms of their activity as the game wanes because they're not anticipating that they're going to touch the ball. So it's almost like that theory, Skip, feed the beast, get them involved, make the other guys happy initially, knowing that when money time arrives, you are the two that will deliver the goods. Mm. It'll take a little bit of time. They got a new coach in Billy Donovan, but they got exceptional assistants in Monty Williams, who should still be a head coach, by the way, and a guy like Maurice Cheeks, who should also still be a head coach. So having Billy Donovan surrounded by those two guys I think will help and I think Durant and Russell Westbrook will feel themselves out and feel the rest of the team out but I don't think there's much to worry about this early I do I know it's early but I've been watching a lot of Thunder basketball already I'm seeing that troubled dynamic between two superstars with one basketball to share I watched the game I'm going back what, four games to the one at Orlando. They should not have won the game, but they got very lucky because Russell Westbrook banked in a straight-on three at the regulation buzzer to send it into overtime, and they won in two overtimes. At Houston, Kevin Durant was one out of five, one for five in the fourth quarter. Russell Westbrook played pretty well, but obviously it, it looked to me like Durant was still a little out of sync. Is it my turn or your turn? Can I shoot? Is it okay for me to go ahead and shoot this or not? Then last night, that was a home disaster. I know it's way early. We can't overreact just yet. But Russell Westbrook, who can be everything that you say that he can be, he, he well could win the MVP this year. That was not an MVP performance last night. He went one for eight. 
in the fourth quarter of a game in Oklahoma City that they should have put away easily. And meanwhile, Kevin Durant went one for two in the fourth quarter. So Russell took eight shots, Kevin took two. What's wrong with that picture? It's, it's blurred, it's wrong, it, it's out of sync, out of whack. It, it, it just cannot be, and I, I get you. Toronto is an early season surprise. I'm impressed. They lead the NBA in fourth quarter point differential. So way to go. They roared back last night, and if you want to say stole that game, to my eye, it looked like they just won the game. It looked like they were the better team in the fourth quarter because of Westbrook, Durant, your turn, my turn, or my turn, your turn. Which way is it? And they don't have a pecking order in a way to close games that, that they can trust and that will work. So that's what I'm seeing. And again, like you say, new coach, new, new coaching staff, they'll, they'll slowly figure it out. But I still think down the stretch when it really counts, these two will have a hard time sharing one basketball. Well, I think they'll have a hard time sharing the basketball skip early in the season, not later. Uh, we can't sit here and talk that and say that Billy Donovan is an exceptional coach, while Mo Cheeks and, and, and Monty Williams, at the very least, are exceptional assistants, that Kevin Durant and Russell Westbrook are superstar talents, and then insult him by acting like they can't find a way to figure this out. It's incredibly early. Everybody plays, will play their role. Their positions will be defined. But if we want to sit there and nitpick about it, Skip, here's what I would tell you. Kevin Durant will need, not right now, but as the season wanes, will need to be more aggressive. It's not Russell Westbrook's fault that Kevin Durant only shot twice. Don't tell me that he touched the ball two times in the fourth quarter. We all know that he touched the ball more than that. But I go back to that little story, and I'll share, and I'll share it with you and Molly right now. It's an all-time story as far as I'm concerned from my years in Philadelphia as a beat writer covering Allen Iverson with the 76ers. Larry Brown was complaining about Allen Iverson shooting the basketball, saying he was never going to pass it, blah, 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 blah. Allen Iverson pulled me out of the practice floor at Philadelphia College of Osteopathic Medicine, which is where the Sixers practice. And Allen Iverson told this quick story, Skip. He says, Stephen A., how long does it usually take us to get past half court? Would you say about eight seconds? So the shot clock, 24. That's 24 minus eight. That's 16, right? He said, I come up to court. I give it to Eric Snow. Eric Snow gives it to Tyrone Hill. Tyrone Hill gives it to George Lynch or somebody, or to Kembe Mutombo, and ultimately the ball comes back to me. He says, Stephen A., it's about five seconds left on the shot clock. If you let the ball get back to me, evidently you didn't want to do something with this or what you expect me to do. Of course I'll go shoot the ball. And I broke down laughing because as much as that might irritate coaches and beyond, it actually made sense. So when you look at it from that perspective, the reason why the Russell Westbrook story comes into play with Kevin Durant is Russell Westbrook's bringing the ball up the floor. He's the point guard. And they do whatever it is that they do. If the ball touches Kevin Durant, and Kevin Durant is 6'10", who can pull up from 30, who's got a handle nasty enough to go on anybody, doesn't take it upon himself to shoot the basketball, what the hell is Russell Westbrook supposed to do? You got, you, you got to want to do it yourself. And that's what I'm saying. And I've seen Russell Westbrook give Kevin Durant the ball enough where there is absolutely positively no excuse on God's green earth for Kevin Durant to be taking two shots in the fourth quarter. And I, don't tell me he's touched the ball just twice because I've seen him touch the ball more than twice. You got to want it and you got to want to go get it. And that's Kevin. That's on Kevin Durant. That's not on Russell Westbrook. Okay. That's just my okay. Two quick points. Your Iverson story doesn't apply here because Allen Iverson did not have Kevin Durant standing over on the wing saying, hi, how, remember me? I'm, I'm sorry, it was AI or bust on that team. So I, I get agree with what that. you're talking about. Russell Westbrook is the point guard. He makes the first decision. He dribbles it past half court, and he gets to choose. Am I going to pass it to Kevin or pass it to somebody else, or am I going to jack up another shot? And mm -hmm. last night in the fourth quarter, he shot it eight times and made one. Those are all his well, choices. So Kevin can't control him. And last quick point, new coaching staff, trust me, what they're going to learn about Russell, supreme talent, as talented as any player in the entire world, to me, virtually uncoachable. 
He's the point guard. He's not going to listen to what they say. He does what he feels like needs to be done at that moment. Now, I admire see, his guts. See. Nope, he won't. I, I know. I know. I, I just, I just think, I just think, I just think that's disrespectful, Skip. No, it's to sit not. there and it's say, to sit there and say that he's uncoachable. He, he's Skip, just not going to listen. But, but Skip, he just does but Skip, what you're he, accusing him. You're accusing him of not listening, ignoring coaches, and just doing what he wants to do. Well, that's check not it that, out. that that that's that that's well, well. I have checked it out. Thank well, you very much. Well, I don't much. think you've checked with the not, right and folks. That is not, then that is the well. Well, all right. I, forgive me. I will lean on my basketball expertise. I'm sorry. I'm I'll just lean do on that. mine in I, this situation. Well, well, you go ahead and you do that, yep. Skip. But I'm telling you right now. When you look at Russell Westbrook, you treat this guy like he just comes down the court and just jacks up shots. Boy, he, and he does. doesn't pass a it lot. to everybody. Skip, More than skip. you think. And there's, a, and there's a lot of times that he doesn't. Now, I'm in no position to argue about last night's game because I didn't see the fourth quarter of last night's game. So uh, wh whatever you say, I have no choice but to defer until I go home and watch what I taped. But the reality is, is that I don't see a Russell Westbrook that just comes down. I see him making mistakes. I see him being a bit too aggressive at times. I've seen moments where he's done that. But I don't see a Russell Westbrook that continuously comes down the court, ignores his teammates, and just jacks up shots. I don't see that guy. And I don't think that's fair for you to classify him like that. He makes mistakes. He, that, he isn't the prototypical point guard. He's no Chris Paul. He's no Steph Curry. He's no Tony Parker or anybody like that. But Russell Westbrook, supremely confident in an offensive juggernaut in his own right. I have seen him come down the court and give the ball to other people, in particular Kevin Durant. And Kevin Durant gives it up to other people who don't deserve the ball from time to time. You got to know your personnel. And when crunch times arrives, there's certain people that don't need to be touching the ball. There's certain people that do need to be touching the ball. And if I'm Russell Westbrook and I give the ball to Kevin Durant and Kevin Durant defers to somebody else or gives it back to me, then I'm going to do what I got to do. It's just that simple. Okay, who do you think the primary option in the fourth quarter for the Thunder Kevin always Durant. is? It's Kevin wrong. Durant. You're wrong. Kev it's Russell Westbrook. He's the guy with the ball in his hands. He thinks he's oh, wait, the wait, primary wait, wait. option. What was it's your question? For no, years. No, no, no. I don't know what team you've been watching. You're not listening to my question. I'm asking you a question. I didn't understand your question. Are you asking me who should be the number one option or who they designate the number one option to be? Who That's is? what I'm trying to get Just you to who answer. Is. Not I, who gets dead. Who is the who number is? one option? Well, 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 he's the point guard and he's yeah. going to be the number one option. But the point that I'm trying to make to you, it's supposed to be Durant. If this were LeBron or somebody else, you'd be saying, go get the ball. How are you going to sit up there? You trying to tell me it's Russell Westbrook's fault that Kevin Durant took two shots in the fourth quarter? Yes, I am. That's Russell Westbrook's fault? I am. That's, that's asinine. He took eight. That's asinine. He took eight. That's asinine. So you think Russell's yeah, dribbling? I'm not talking about his eight. You don't want the ball? I think I better shoot it then. Wrong. Well, you have the box. Do you have the box score in front of you? How many shots did Oklahoma City take in the fourth have, quarter? I just got the fourth I have, quarter. I, I'm saying I don't, have, I don't have it in front of me. I'm asking. How many shots did they take in the fourth quarter? Oh, Oklahoma I don't know. City. I just got because their again, lines. I, I just wrote down are, their two lines. Not, chances are eight, it's not ten. Two. Chances are it's not ten. Somewhere along the way, when you're the guy who's the superstar, when you're universally recognized as arguably the second best talent on the planet, when you are a former scoring champion multiple times, when you average 27 in your sleep, when you're averaging 29 for the season, for the season when you are six feet ten, who can pull up from 30 and somehow, some way, you find a way to take just two shots in the fourth quarter. That's Russell Westbrook's fault? Yeah, because he's the guy pulling the trigger. He, he gets to choose. What happened at Houston? Late game, close game. James Harden game, ultimately. Russell Westbrook took eight shots in the fourth quarter, but he made five of them. Kevin tried five shots in that fourth quarter and made only one at Houston. And I think last night, Kevin just gave up and said, you go ahead and do it. And all, I'm, and all I'm saying is, you making the argument that Russell Westbrook may shoot too much, I agree with that. I'm just saying, don't blame him for the amount of shots Kevin Durant doesn't take when it counts. You are the superstar. It doesn't matter what Russell Westbrook is. We all know what Kevin Durant is. The fourth quarter arrives. It's a tight game. It's money time. Kevin Durant is supposed to want the basketball. Want it. 
You have watched too much basketball over the years. You know the difference between cats who want it and who don't. Now, Kevin Durant ain't scared. Please don't get me wrong. I'm in no way implying that he's scared to take the last shot, that he wants to defer it. No, I'm not saying that. I am saying there is a level of aggression that somebody with his skill, who is universally recognized as the second best player on the planet, who's one of the greatest scoring machines, who will go down as arguably the greatest scorer in the history of this game when all is said and done or at least one of them the fourth quarter arrives there is I don't care how many shots Russell Westbrook takes we can say that he takes too many shots but there is no excuse for Kevin Durant to be taking two shots in a fourth quarter of any close I game I agree he's Kevin I'm completely Durant with you. so last get, quick get question just give me a ball. quick answer one word answer get the ball do you think Kevin Durant went to Russell after the game in the locker room and said hey man I need the basketball more in the fourth quarter you think he did I, I don't think I don't know I don't think so I didn't ask I, I don't doubt know he did. but I will tell but but I would tell you this you doubt he did I doubt he did because that doesn't appear to be his MO which once again brings us back to the M.O. of Kevin Durant. Yep. It is one thing. Let, let, I'll go as far as to say this. Since, since we're on the subject, could that possibly be why he's not a champion yet? Maybe. Because let me tell you something. Let me tell you something right now. Kevin Durant averaged 30 on, on better than 50% shooting during the NBA Finals to Miami. There were times when we thought that was the quietest 30 yep, I we agree. had seen. Good point. But when Russell Westbrook dropped 44 on them, it was loud, wasn't it? Because you saw an assassin coming. Now, even though they lost that game, you saw an assassin trying to come at you. All I'm saying is Kevin Durant is one of the top two, three players on the planet Earth. There is no excuse for a close game to be going on and Kevin Durant shoots twice. Got you it. pointing the finger mm -hmm. at Russell Westbrook. That is not Russell Westbrook's fault. You got to go and get the damn ball. He's got the skills right. to do it. Go get it. All right, we got to get to break. All eyes will be on KD and Westbrook tonight in the United Center. Both teams will be looking to bounce back, entering this one 3 oh, and 2. Win that one. Saturday, two of the best coaches and teams in college football face off in Tuscaloosa. Will Saban's